Ah, the good old days. Just hanging out in the Shodo Club, doing some fun kanji. It's really nice to, you know, look back on all of those nice old memories from long ago. All the fun messages that students have sent you through the years. One of those things that makes Japan so much fun. Knowing that, you know, all the students actually enjoyed your class and listened to what you were saying. Wait, what's this? I enjoyed playing with you. I want to speak you in English. Let's speak in English with me. Okay, so maybe they didn't listen to my classes all that much. And that's pretty creepy. Yeah. Ah, Natsukashi. It's just all the nostalgia. Good stuff, good stuff. Little notes and letters, and hey! Here's something that's very nostalgic. Star Ocean. Um, one of the Star Ocean game series, so I thought we would have a look at this one today. This is one of the few PlayStation games that I know of that actually has two discs, which is kind of unique. I don't know. I could be wrong, but uh, I think this is the only game I've ever owned that has actually two discs in it. So you know you're in for a really good ride. So let's take a quick look at this uh, somewhat forgotten RPG, Star Ocean, Till the End of Time. Such an awesome intro, and that music by Sakuraba-san, just top-notch. So welcome everybody to Star Ocean, till the end of time. And we're just going to have a quick look at this game. 
I, uh, you know, kind of will start out with the story and then we'll show the battle system and and then the ending and maybe some secret things or some extra things. But here we will start out at the beginning, our humble beginnings with our hero who whose name is Fate. And I always thought that was an odd name, but hey, Fate, yeah. I guess it could be kind of cool. And our lovely Sophia. Handing us a drink with a really weird symbol on it. Which, uh, yeah, is a little disturbing to be honest. I'm not sure if I would actually drink that. Yeah, Sophia has such a cute voice. She is upset with fate because he is playing video games instead of going to the beach. You know, walking with her. But she promised he would do. So yeah, here's the big mistake all guys make, so guys, take a note of it. Or else the girl's gonna be angry with you. And you don't want a mage to be angry with you. Fate realizes now that she's angry. So, uh, the game is, you know, really nice. Actually, like I've said before, all the games in the in this series are actually pretty nice. So, you know, Star Ocean is quite the uh, famous series. It's not a long series, but it it's really good. All the games are great. And for PlayStation 2, uh, you know, this one is is pretty good. They they did a lot of work with it. Um, graphics are great. Uh, music is just top notch. And the battle system is a lot of fun. So you can kind of see here the scenery. Got to talk to the fox girl first. Because that's more important. And then we'll look at the scenery. It's kind of funny. Sophie is just slowly following us. And Fate only has one speed. Run fast. Yeah, it looked like the trees and the water, um, you know, the stuff in the background, the layering is just, you know, it's really gorgeous. Uh, really well done. A lot of work put into it. Very few shortcuts taken. This game uh, kind of feels like an old school game, too, because it's pretty hard. The, uh, the battle difficulty in this game is, you know, definitely ramped up. So this is not an easy RPG. Here's another of the main characters. Kind of funny and one of the uh, comedy relief characters. I know I often talk kind of slow or like, you know, put pauses between my sentences. That's that's because I've been teaching English in Japan for too long. So I often repeat myself or, you know, I talk really slow. So I apologize for that for people that maybe that gets on your nerves or something. But yeah, I do tend to just talk slow, use simple words. 
and repeat myself a lot because that's what teachers do. We have to repeat ourselves a lot. Anyway, back to the game. So, you know, she thinks that Fate and Sophia are there for her signature. So she suddenly decides to sign the back of his shirt and it's kind of important because the, the rest of the game where he's wearing this shirt that uh, Mark is on the back. A pretty uh, crude uh, picture of her face with her name written in English. So, of course, as all games are, we suddenly have an emergency in paradise. What is with these games always starting with something happy, like a beach resort, fun time, and then, yeah, all hell breaks loose. Is that really how it happens in real life? It's like Jurassic Park. It's always, ooh, ah, and then everybody's running for their lives. It's fun, and then they're running and screaming. Now, the battle system in this game is very interesting. You know, you've got a combination of action and, you know, Final Fantasy. Not quite turn-based, but in a way there's, you know, turn-based. Because the enemies do have to take a break, and so do you, with the Guts uh, bar. I always thought it was amusing, they called it Guts. Yeah, poor Sophia just died there because I have it a really high difficulty. But the game has this interesting uh, blocking system where if you're not moving, you can uh, you know, sort of stun an enemy that tries to attack you, and the enemies can do the same. And there are different levels of attacks. I'll show some more uh, battle as we go on, but... Uh, just here in the beginning, wanted to show the humble beginnings of the game. Some of the levels are really claustrophobic, and so it looks a little strange when you turn your camera angle. But the, you know, the detail is still quite nice. It's still pretty, pretty nice. The outside areas are much better. So before we get into the battle system, let's uh, have a look at the characters in this game real quick. I wanted to go ahead and just introduce them all and maybe show their uh, outfits. So uh, you can like you know choose outfits that you've unlocked and you know use them during the battle, as most uh, games these days do. They have the you know different outfits. So our hero is Fate, and later we'll meet a uh, friend, Cliff. Um, I'm curious if some of the names were changed for the English version. You know, as always, I I never play the English versions, really. I just play the original Japanese versions. And I know that often main characters' names are changed. So this is Sophia. Kind of the main female. Hey, she's got a, like a cat outfit. I don't remember that one. But of course, we'll have to go with the schoolgirl outfit. And here we have Adure with his geta on his feet. It's kind of funny, uh, you change his outfit and he has a different tattoo on his back each time. And some of them are pretty funny. They're, they're different, different tattoos. There he has I the kanji for love on it. And yeah, a picture of his daughter smiling. Here is Mirage, who has a maid outfit. So yeah, she's got to be in the party, right? But yeah, all the characters in this game are quite interesting. Uh, the only thing that I really 
dislike is, I think there's, what, 10? I think there's 10 main characters in this game, and at a certain point, uh, you can only choose uh, two out of four, and the other two will be left behind. So you got six main that you can't miss, and then you got two others, like uh, Albert, Arubera here, Arubera Nox, and uh, Sufre. These are, you know, you can only choose like one or the other kind of thing, and um, it's kind of a bummer because that means the rest of the game you can't, you know, actually use that character ever again. You have to do a new playthrough if you want to get uh, the characters. So here we have Maria, probably one of my favorites. She uses a gun and has a lot of long range attacks that are quite good. Some strange outfits, but hey, this is probably her best. So, actually that's not all the characters because, you know, you're forced to make a choice between which characters you take, and there's two that you'll always have to leave behind. And I'll try to show them later so that you get to see all the characters. But yeah, just looking at, you know, for example, some of the towns and some of the landscapes, talking to mermaids, you know, the... Uh, it's just uh, really well done. You know, the atmosphere is really nice in each of the towns and villages. There's there's a lot of uh, detail to make it look, you know, realistic. A lot of things you don't really notice. And you know it's a good game when, you know, you don't notice that things are odd. You know it's a bad game when you notice And uh, the dungeons. I'll have a walk through some of the dungeons. And try to show off some of the characters and the fights. It's kind of neat, they also have, uh, you know, various hazards. Like if you're in the cave, for example, there'll be rolling boulders and, uh, you know, other things like that during the battle. So the fight system is, you know, quite a bit more dynamic that way than some other games. The the environment also, you know, uh, changes the way you fight and the choices you have to make. Like in the volcano, you have to avoid, you know, fire and lava and standing in that. And you should probably avoid special attacks like that too. And for you know some of this video, I've I've used a, a farther in save so that my characters are stronger, makes it a little easier just to kind of show off what the game looks like, you know, and kind of how the dungeons work and how the fights work. So if if it seems like the enemies are dying quick, it's because I've over leveled. But, yeah, the, the battle system is really action-packed and a lot of fun. A lot of interesting ways you can set up your characters and, uh, you know, interesting special moves. Some of the uh, open areas are also quite well done. Uh, this way you don't have those black, you know, sort of frames when you rotate your screen, but you can rotate your screen and it doesn't matter. You just get a huge expanse. And uh, one of the things that's uh, very interesting uh, with this game, if you'll notice, you know, from the numbers popping up, 
is that uh, in this game you have HP and MP. I notice uh, poor Sophia there died. She has zero MP. And uh, that's because in this game you can die when your MP reaches zero. So HP and MP, you know, it's kind of like your magic points, but I think they use mind points. You actually have to, uh, you know, be careful with your HP and your MP in this game. And that's uh, quite different than a lot of other RPGs. You know, if your mind reaches zero, the mind points, you still die. And uh, some enemies have much less uh, MP than they do HP. So you can see there the double numbers. So if you take down all their MP, you can actually kill them without having to take their HP down. So it adds quite a bit of interesting strategy to the battle system. This is one of my favorite dungeons, the Firewall. As you can see written down there, it's incredibly confusing, complicated maze on purpose. Just like a firewall would be. As you can see, the red uh, letters is MP damage, and the white ones are HP damage. And it's kind of interesting, some dungeons have uh, enemies you know, that maybe have, say, 10 MP, but 1,000 HP. So you'll want to kill them with MP damage, you can almost insta-kill them. But if you're doing HP damage, you'll be fighting all day long, pretty much. So it adds another uh, interesting layer of strategy. It's got a pretty good map system. A good balance between, uh, you know, areas with no enemies and areas with enemies. They don't overwhelm you. And, you know, you can see them on the world map. So, it is possible to actually avoid enemies, unlike, you know, much older games. You know, the older Final Fantasy and the older Tales games were random. random encounters. Yeah, just uh, looking at the, you know, the flooring and the background and, um, you know, it's just a really well done game. All the dungeons are a lot of fun. Um, instead of just fighting enemies, there's, you know, puzzles in some of them and some of them have, uh, you know, traps, things you have to go overcome like these ball things. If I get hit, it takes you back to the beginning of the area. So in order to get through, you gotta avoid them. And the music is great with uh, each of the dungeons. You know, well-chosen uh, music for each dungeon, you know, kind of matching the theme. No easy dungeons here. This game is pretty hard. The uh, difficulty is ramped up. It's like playing old school NES games, only with better graphics. I don't know, like uh, Valkyrie Profile series is also a fairly difficult, the way it's designed, a fairly difficult uh, RPG, but yeah, this one is definitely ranked you know, similarly as maybe the Valkyrie Profile series. It's, uh, you know, not an easy walk in the park. You do have to be really careful during battles. And you can die pretty quick. And a lot of leveling might be necessary. Power leveling, unfortunately. I just wanted to show off. Here's another pretty interesting area in the game. But rather than you know just having an empty background, they 
and they've got stuff you can see floating down there in the background, like twisted versions of the platforms you're already walking on. And once you get used to the battle system, it's, it's really satisfying to just take the enemies down. Yeah, in this place I just love some of the uh, backgrounds you can see there. Fortunately, you don't have to go through all of those platforms, but yeah, they're just like massive twisted platforms everywhere in the background. Gives it much more depth. You know, some of the dungeons have small corridors like I showed in the beginning and in the mine, for example, which gives you the sort of black, you know, sections when you rotate, but it's usually not too noticeable. The towns in the game have some really nice detail as well. A lot of places you, you know, can't actually walk to, but you know there's just detail that you may not see or you just might completely miss because it's up high on the top of a building or you know in a house that you can't quite see. So I find myself walking through the towns a lot and rotating the camera just so I can you know see the rooftops and just see you know some of the nice detail of the towns and each area is just really fun to explore really good variety of enemies and one of my favorite dungeons is probably the moon base now this place just has awesome music and just the the way it's laid out you've got some damage sections and you know, you've got some sections that are normal got some interesting enemies and it's quite big but if you remember in the intro there was a giant space station behind the moon and uh, this is it <laughs> Decided to use Nell for this section so that you could see uh, one of the other characters that wasn't uh, shown when I was showing the character profiles. But yeah, this is a very cool uh, area in the game. This massive uh, moon base. A lot of really cool detail and just uh, fun to explore, and it's pretty big. Decently powerful enemies, and you know, rather than just having darkness below in the pits, you know, they actually have as much detail as possible instead of just having kind of blackness, you know, where things fall off. Some of these small side rooms have, you know, tons of computers on the wall with uh, moving parts and, you know, various things being displayed. You know, all around it's just a really, really cool place, well designed. One of those dungeons I, I don't mind walking around and exploring just because it, it looks so interesting. And it's got such uh, intriguing and creepy music. Now let's check out uh, a little bit of the bonus stuff this game has to offer. Now that we've looked at you know some of the fighting and some of the the views of the dungeons. Let's uh, look at some of the mini games, because what would a, an RPG be without uh, mini games? And of course, you have probably the cutest racing mini game ever made. 
where you get to bet on these cute bunny thingies and see who wins. Go number two! Go number two! It's kind of funny they interfere with each other when somebody's losing and they even have attacks and some abilities. Here goes number four. Since he was so far behind, he's gonna knock everybody down and see if he can catch up. But yeah, if racing is your thing. Another part of this uh, that's kind of interesting is these. Uh, it's kind of like a chess. It's almost a chessboard puzzle, which is what it looks like, but it actually is, you know, Japan's most favorite game of all time, uh, Rock, Paper, Scissors. And that's really all it is. You have, you know, three different uh, kinds of statues you can choose, and, you know, depending on which one it is, you know, Rock beats Scissors, Scissors beats Paper, blah, blah, blah. You know, depending on how it's lined up, you can either win or lose. So it's kind of a puzzle slash uh, strategy game, but at its heart, it's it's still uh, just uh, paper, rock, scissors. Let's try uh, one more just to see what I mean here. Talk to the really uh, disturbing guy. And let's do a difficult one. You know what, let's just do level S, the most difficult one you could possibly do. So you got a wizard, a thief, and a knight. So you got three, you know, rock, paper, scissors, basically. And then you have to place uh, your pieces, but you don't want to, you know, face one that's weak against the other like a knight versus a mage. So the thief can kill the wizard, and the wizard can kill the uh, thief, I think, and then the knight can kill the mage, or something like that. It's just paper, rock, scissors. Junk and boom. That's pretty much all it is. But it's uh, it's pretty cool. They made it, you know, into this kind of animated board uh, puzzle game. I found it quite unique among, you know, bonus games and RPGs. It's like how far can you take the rock paper scissors idea? Another thing that this game is infamous for is the crafting system. Uh, which can be fun, uh, maybe a good distraction. Got our lovely, uh, um, what do you call her? Organizer, lady that sets everything up for you, gives you the information and the announcements. And basically, you can recruit. Uh, various crafters and you know make different things uh, depending on the areas in the game and uh, you know different crafters can make different things and you just kind of set it up to where they they do their thing while you're adventuring around and then you can come back and if they've created something you can pick it up and use it But yeah, I'm surprised the creators of this game, they had to come up with a ridiculous number of characters you know, to, to recruit. And all these characters are in the game and you know, sometimes you have to do a mini quest or you know, get something for them in order for them to join and become a crafter for you. But 
but it's kind of a neat and little interesting uh, side venture and it's probably one of the better ways to make you know some of the best things in the game crafting materials so that you can upgrade your weapons and armor which is incredibly necessary being the uh, the difficulty level of this is pretty high So right quick, I wanted to introduce uh, Nell here. Uh, this is one of the characters that, um, you know, is optional. So you can either pick her or you don't. And then the rest of the game you won't have access. Which is kind of my only gripe about this game. You know, Nell is really cool and so is Aruberu. But you can only have one or the other. You can't really have both. It's kind of a mutually exclusive thing. And yes, this game has a secret dungeon, too. A rather massive secret dungeon. But I'll go ahead and not torture you with that because yeah, it is pretty hard and it is torture. Instead, while we're on the extra stuff, I wanted to go ahead and show the uh, extra secret boss in this game. Now if you know, if you notice at the intro this game is made by Square Enix and uh, AAA or Tri-Ace as their name is and Tri-Ace is famous for of course Valkyrie Profile. They make some really really good RPGs but since Tri-Ace and Square Enix have a crossover in this game, of course the secret boss is none other than Furei, only a chibi version of her. And yeah, she may look cute, but she will destroy you. As she's about to do to me. Yeah, once you get to the end of the game, you have access to the secret dungeon. And, uh, this very special kind of secret boss, which is a homage to, uh, Tri Ace, the other series. Remember Frey was a pretty tough boss, and Lenneth um, in the other game as well. But yeah, fighting a little version of her where she just totally ruins your day is uh, quite mortifying. But it's a, it's a good challenge. And be prepared to be in it for the long run because it's one of those fights that takes like an hour. Even on normal difficulty. But still a fun uh, final challenge. And the final dungeon in this game is also a really great challenge. So if you haven't played it, I recommend checking it out. And I'll just keep it secret what happens at the end of this battle. So let's go ahead and see what's at the end of this game, for those of you that probably will never buy it. Or play it. I kind of like to show the, uh, you know, endings 
of these games that I put on my channel that I'm sort of highlighting. And uh, that's for, you know, people that may just never play it and they're curious about what happens at the end. So I kind of show the beginning and the ending and some fun stuff in between. But yeah, there's also a pretty epic finale in this game. And um, I'm you know, somewhat leveled up, so the the final boss won't be as difficult as he should be. If you finish the secret dungeon and come back, you know, he'll be uh, quite a bit easier. Yeah, that was pretty quick. But wait! All final bosses morph into something more dangerous, right? I love this ending scene. He's kind of being like Captain Nemo at his organ. Which is actually a computer console, but it's like he's playing the organ, or, or is that like some madman, Beethoven. And yeah, that's how I view Captain Nemo, or Beethoven, if they went crazy. And then, of course, there is an epic final battle. <laughs> Gotta make sure not to lose MP, or the character dies also. Yeah, I was a little over leveled for that. Just to make it quick, because this video is probably already going to be a bit too long.
消滅しようとしているのねああそんな私たち間に合わなかったのさてどうしたものかしらね信じるさ僕たちは現実にここにいるってことを。そうね私たちはただの作られたデータなんかじゃない、うん、消えろって言われてもはいそうですかって聞いたりなんかしないんだから絶対にそうだ消えるものか何もない何もかもが消え去ってしまった光も空気も自分の体さえ存在しない完全なる無えない本当に何も存在していないのかなら何もないと考えているこの思いはこの思いは確かにある僕が僕であることを認識できるなら何もないわけじゃないこの思いは確かにあるだからこそ僕は生きているんだ I would like to show all the endings to this game, but after the final cutscene,、um, you get you know, a ton of dialogue and a ton of scenes kind of you know, showing what each character is doing. There'll be a credit roll, of course. And,、um, and then you get, you know, I think it's like an hour, almost an hour of cutscenes. Where, you know, showing what each character is doing, and depending on the choices you made as fate, you know, there'll be a different ending, and you can have a special ending with each of the main characters. Kind of like、uh, Tales of Symphonia, reminds me of that, you know, depending on which character likes Lloyd best, you'll have a, you know, a scene with Lloyd and that character at the end.、Uh, this game works the same. I'll go ahead and cut the credits short. I did want to include the staff and the cast there. But I'll go ahead and show a brief、uh, view of each of the ending scenes. I mean, they're just really too long to leave in. I mean, they would take an entire video themselves. But it's kind of interesting that they put you know, this at the very end of the game, just、uh, you know, kind of showing what the main characters are doing、um, after. You know, the events of the game. And, you know, most of them are pretty funny. Some interesting things happening. Cute. And I guess the one ending that maybe everybody wants to see or not is、uh, the ending with Fate and Sophia. 
I guess, you know, Sophie is kind of the main girl, even though I think Fate and Maria's ending is probably the best in the game, but I'll go ahead and include Fate with uh, Sophia in this run. But depending on who you choose, you get these uh, other scenes, so you can see what all the other characters have been up to. I guess uh, Try Ace, you know, really likes to tell a story. I've noticed many of their games have a lot of dialogue in them, but they put a lot of work into this one, and you know, the ending is no exception. You've got like, you know, ten ending scenes for all the main characters and then of course a special one depending on which one uh, likes fate the most and just because she's technically the main i'll go ahead and show the final scene with fate and sophia ちょっと顔色が悪いぞ。疲れてるんじゃないのか。うん、少しね。でも平気だよ。輸送船が混んでて、まともに座れなかったからな。無理だけはするなよな。ありがとう。でも本当に大丈夫だから。それにさ、船